<coughs> Holtz, this is him. President and CEO of Peak Learning and Consulting Firm in Flagstaff, Arizona, says the entrepreneur's job is striving on the edge. Not easy, on the edge. Ross Perot says success is on the razor's edge of failure. Sally tells me, you, we must be doing well. Because if we step over the precipice, we're dead. And I said, well, that's why we got to learn to balance. That's why she started up yoga. She, you know, she can do all this stuff on one foot. I said, well, go ahead, honey, because you can, you know, you know, I'll let you stand next to the edge instead of me. A cousin firm in uh, Flagstaff Arizona says, uh, thriving on the edge, creating something new in pursuit of a high reward. You undergo high risk. In, in a, it's an occupational hazard to meet setbacks, rejections, mistakes, according to Stoltz. The critical factor in your success will be surviving, profiting from adversity. I'm good because I thrive in adversity. I like when the shit hits the fan. That's, I mean, that's when I feel most alive. It's like when I was young and I could fuck all day and all night. I felt most alive. Most people don't like adversity. And if you hang around with people that don't like adversity, you won't like it. No matter where your heart is and where your brain is. Because you do what you PC other people do. I'm starting to talk like a fucking healer. You do what you see other people do. You don't do what they tell you to do. And it's very simple. It's a very simple formula. And I hope that's not why Bogdan moved to, you know, I don't, I don't take credit for Bog, beating Bogdan down and him moving to Columbia. But I know he, you know, he, 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 moved, he moved from me to Columbia, so I don't know if two, two equal four there. I hope not, because I like him, you know. We like them, and we like Giancarlo as well. They're good kids. And um, a little misguided at times, but they're good kids. And that's, that's a problem when you get, we deal with kids. They come up with funky ideas. Just like I did. I explained some of the things I did as a kid. You never met anybody that did shit like I did when I was a kid. And that's why when my kids tell me, Dad, you just don't understand. Is that a fact? You think I don't understand? Well, well okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't want to tell my kids everything I did because that's not right. Okay? I don't want to give them any ideas. They got enough ideas of their own. They don't need to know what Dad did when he was there, when he was their age. But you guys, you know, have an opportunity. It's because you, most of you are so young, except for Father George and Ricardo and I, old guys. But I mean, you got the world by the ass. You have so much opportunity. It's, it's limitless. I mean, you have no boundaries. You know, Holtz also says the best strategy is to put an employee in a situation where he has just enough knowledge and expertise to handle the task and no more. Remember I said raise him up, raise him up, raise him up? He'll get stronger as a result. There is a guideline for how much, there is a guideline for how much latitude you should give a subordinate in making decisions, any decision above the wall. Above the water? I wonder where you got that. Above the water line, your people can make. Worst case, you'll blow a hole in the hull, which can be repaired. Below the water line, where you can sink the ship, that decision we make together. Your employee shouldn't have to bear the responsibility alone. You got this from me. I didn't get it from him. But if he's really young, I don't make decision together. I make it for you and then you watch me. Because we may be making it this, together and then I get on the phone and I come back and we got a hole below the water line. And that's how you train people up. And that's how the SEAL teams train up. That's how the, you know, uh, the Rangers and all these combat guys, they train with experts. Everybody can do three different jobs. I haven't read Paul Holt's most recent book, but he's a good guy. I met him. I had lunch with him. He's a, good, he's a decent guy. Motivation programs are useless. They are based on flawed assumption. Very important. That how that how you make someone feel is the key to success. Research shows that happy, positive people are decimated by adversity just as often as less bubbly people. It doesn't do any good to teach people to chant, I'm unstoppable. What matters is the way they meet and whether they keep climbing the mountains. 
It's how you react, react to adversity. And that's the biggest problem or challenge or, that I have with virtually not all, but almost all the rest of the personal development guys. They do this happy, slappy fucking shit. And I mean, that dog just doesn't hunt. And you can tell nobody's ever built a company. All they know is how to sell Patrick or Steve or God knows who to put their ass on a seminar seat. Do you realize that 70% of all personal development stuff bought on the internet, on television, out of bookstores is never used? 70% is never fucking opened. Just like my school books when I went to school that I never took out of the locker. 70%. That's incredible. And the personal development business in America is supposed to be an $11 billion business. So that means about seven and a half, eight billion dollars is going down the toilet. Yep. Give it to me. Yeah. I know what to do with it. <laughs> Formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. When I was at Bear Stearns, I had, the, I had the pleasure of knowing Ace Greenberg and Cy Lewis, the founder. Cy Lewis actually hired me. He says well, he wants to hire poor, smart, with a deep desire to become rich. Yes. Uh, I'm dilemma. If we, we are hiring good people, uh, we used to hire people with high potential, no experience. Uh, That's a tough nut, but go ahead. Yeah, well, I, I'm wondering, should we go on with this or hire people with high potential? Uh, if you want to be a billion experience. dollar company yesterday, hiring high potential people with no experience is going to take you longer. If you want to be a billion dollar company yesterday, you need to hire people high potential, but with experience with experience because you know everybody you hire I'm just going to use you as an example because you're here Andre I mean may or may not be have as much potential as him but they may have more experience so you know you hire one no experience high potential and three high potential with experience so you got a mix and then you can do a test you know you can do a split test <laughs> you know and see who comes out the best now, in the Philippines, we hire three guys to do the same project. Some people would say that it's a waste of the same project, the exact same fucking project. No differentiation. 100% the same. To see who does it first, who does it, and then we outsource a fourth. We outsource a fourth in Singapore, we outsource a fourth in uh, Belarus, and we outsource a fifth in uh, India or Pakistan. And we see who does the best. Guess what the results are? The people that know they're competing fold up like accordions and fall dead. They normally don't even finish the fucking project. The people that are outside that don't know they're competing finish the project but slow. But if you tell the people outside they're competing, the, not always, but 50% of the time they'll do it and they'll, they're, 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 you'll get a good result. But the young kids today, they don't want to compete. They don't. Three of our own guys. No. All of a sudden they don't show up for work. Another one quits. He yells at one and the other one quits. <laughs> and therefore, and if I come into the programming room, I mean everybody just pisses their leg right down here. <laughs> I'm the last goddamn person that anybody wants to see in the programming room. Do, do or in the IT room or research and development or the paper fuck click room where we got all these alleged gurus. Do you do that for the actual job or for projects? Like if you're going to hire, I think I was asking yesterday, if you're going to hire, a, you don't do that on a manager, right? You're not going to hire three managers. And have no, we do. We've hired there, three right? managers. We hired three, uh, three operations managers to see who's going to do the best. Fire. Now, now, if I, if they hire the three of us, I do everything humanly possible to make sure I beat Marcus and I beat him. I mean, I would do it. I, I work late. I do this. I do that. I make sure who got the goddamn job, not the kids. Oh, 
Well, Marcus is, was a former world-class athlete. He's probably better than me. So I'll just give up. I mean, there's one. Okay? There's one. And, and, and then, a, you know, they just they fold up like fucking accordions. Now, yes, we put a lot of pressure on people. There's no question about that. I mean, we put a lot more pressure than you guys. Okay? But we put a lot more pressure than just about everybody. I don't know anybody that's got the... the but we're also more successful than just about everybody we know, too. And we, we're successful with a massive turnover we have. We have... The industry average in Asia is 40% turnover. We have 70. And we still are successful. How's that possible? Because instead of you programming ten, six projects a week, you're programming 20 projects a week. So even when we lose people, they're producing more. And then we get a smart kid, a math major out of one of the big schools, good schools there, and he doesn't need three months to figure out what you did. He figures out in seven hours. So that's why I don't like the transfer knowledge bullshit. I don't believe in it. Because what we're involved in, in this, these models, is not brain science. It's not rocket science. It just isn't. You know, AdSense and arbitrage and all this bullshit. I mean, it's, 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 it's fucking monkey business. It's simple. If it was really hard, there'd only be a few people doing it. And we already know there's a lot more than a few people doing it, don't we? Everybody and his fucking dog's doing it. And the reason why everybody and his fucking dog's doing it is because there's no barrier to fucking entry. And it's easy on top of it. If we were operating brain surgery, we'd be competing with eight, ten people. But we're competing with eight million people because it's easy. And you guys have been fortunate. I'm not saying you're lucky. I'm saying you've been fortunate that you've been able to do some of the right things at the right time to make the money. But to delude yourself into believing that you're something fucking special ain't right. I can find, or Robert can find, 500 people that can do what you do better in 48 hours. 500. This is what you gotta be. Fucking assassins. Osama. Boom, boom. Oh, we had no choice but to shoot him dead. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. He's standing there with his wife on one side who they shot as well, okay? And his other wife, he's hiding behind his wives. So the, actually the guy was a good shot. He didn't hit the other wife. One in the chest, one in the head. That's what we want. That's what we want. And look at, and they, again, they trained eight, nine months before they went in and did it. They practice, 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 practice. How many times have I got to tell you that? Practice, practice. I still practice. I'm sure I practice being successful. More than the entire universe of people that have ever come to this seminar cumulatively. And I had forgotten from 1993 to 1997, middle of 97, I created $400 million in equity in my, in my mentees. I had forgotten that. That statistic. I don't know how big the number is now, but in three and a half years, I told you, I created the $400 million for them, not for me. For them. And... Would they lie about the number? No. There's no reason for them to lie about the number. There's no reason for them to tell me to blow smoke up my ass, because I don't need smoke up my ass. So I don't know how big the number is now. I really don't. But now that I heard that, I'm going to go do some checking. I'm going to make some phone calls. I'm not going to Skype anybody, but I'm going to make some phone calls. And say, hey, what are you doing now, bro? How much money you got? Because I have a feeling half of that number is broke crump. But anyway, I don't know. I'm going to find out. She's doing gold deals now in Angola or something. 
The boss drives his men, the leader coaches them. The boss depends upon authority, the leader on goodwill. The boss inspires fear, the leader inspires enthusiasm. The boss fixes the blame, the leader fixes the breakdown. The boss says go, the leader says let's go. There's a slide coming up by Tom Landry that when things go wrong, it's my fault. When things go right, it's ours. And things go super right, it's yours. Seven words you should lose in your vocabulary. This is the way it, it, we do it here. This is the old management style. You can't do that anymore. I already told you that. Some people are so good. I love this slide. Some people are so good that nothing a leader can do will make them better. That doesn't apply here. <laughs> Others are so incorrigible that nothing can be done to improve them. I'm not going to say that about you. But the great bulk of people go with the moral tide of the moment. The leader must help create that tide. It's up to you to create the way for them to ride. Not with bullshit, not with excuses, but with reality and enthusiasm. To be a leader, you have to have followers. Leadership and selling your dream. That's what this is all about. My task is to get grown men and women to do what they don't want to do so they can be what they want to be. So if I have to beat you, spit on you, kick you, piss on you, that's what I'll do. I will have extra joy of pissing on sip, though, I have to admit. It's, I'll get a little, you know, I mean, you know, I get a little extra joy. Because when I look at him, I know he's not but a crack pipe like Bogdan. But he is the mentee of Bogdan. So there's got to be some gypsy blood there. Transfer. I am not going to teach you about leadership, but guide you based on my own experience leading. Leadership. Leadership is like gravity. You all know it's there, but how do you define it? What time is it? Six, okay, six, six, I'm, gonna, I'm talking a few more minutes. Um, needless to say, I like this subject. But I like all the subjects. But leadership is so goddamn important. You know, if I see it go one more time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick a fly rod on your ear here, so if it, when you go over to look at him, it rips your ear off. <laughs> This was a book I read many years ago. It's a good book from Upward Mo uh, Nobility, How to Succeed in Business Without Losing Your Soul. Now, Father, so some people say my soul's already gone. I don't believe that, and you don't believe that, because you believe I, I have faith, and I do have faith, and all the nuns at our charities believe I have faith. Some of the things I've told you in the last three days, you look astonished. But this is the way it is in the real world. When I told Joseph what it was going to be like going to Hollywood and make movies, I told him stuff he didn't necessarily want to hear. But I'm telling you the truth. And in this his particular case, I have experience because I used to make movies. I'm not proud that I made movies. It's not something that I write on my resume. But it's the truth. And I dealt with, like I told you, Dolly Parton, Hoyt Axton, Nick Nolte, uh, Robin Williams, uh, Richard Harris, Karen Black, Martin Landau. So I wasn't dealing with shit pot people. But it's a tough fucking business, <laughs> believe me. It makes the internet business look like a walk in the park. I mean, it's tough business. But I'm going to do everything I can to help you. Okay. At Paris Island, the Marine Corps training camp, officers and NCOs adapted the affection of uh, a carrying a swagger stick. A swagger stick everywhere. Then the island new, uh, got a new commandant, a general named David Shoup. He was already legendary, a Medal of Honor winner for uh, heroism at the Battle of Tarawa, that's uh, during the Second World War, and a man who reputed to write poetry in his spare time. With nothing left to prove, the general style was uh, adamantly utilita utilitarian. Um, from, says, from the minute he came on board, it was conspicuously obvious that it, the new top man did not carry a swagger stick. A few days after he made his first inspection tour of the island, the following memo was posted. 
the bulletin board of all units from the commanding general regarding swagger sticks, if you need one, carry one. If you need one, carry one. The next day, not a swagger stick was to be seen on Paris Island. If you go there now, almost 30 years later, you won't find one. I've never forgot the succinct brilliance of that memo, which achieved its desired effect totally. Instantly, we, instantly yet elegantly, in six words, the general had his way with the uh, ironic twist that made a direct order superfluous. In the military, in the old days, you carried a swagger stick because you needed it because you whacked people with it. If that's the way that you had to show leadership, he said, if you need one, carry one. Obviously, the other officers thought, well, shit, but he's telling us that we don't really need one. We should exhibit better leadership skills. And in the old days, I used to go around like that, but I don't do that because I'm a kinder, gentler man now. I don't do that, you know. But I still, and the person that gave me this was that jockey, <laughs> the female jockey. Oh, yeah. And that's why I have it. And uh, I, I beat it so much that I finally cut off the end of it because it got frayed. Whatever leadership is, there is a price of leadership and a cost of conviction. Is it an art? Is it a science? I believe it's an art. It's not a science. But there's been a lot of papers written about it. What is the sum total of the thoughts you have about yourself? If you have a high self-esteem, by definition, your ability to exhibit leadership skills is higher, better, because you feel good about yourself. If you've excelled at things and have higher self-esteem, your leadership skills are better. It gets back to self-esteem like we talked about earlier today. So one of the things that will be a direct result of Dream Team, etc., and many of the things I've already talked about, is it will increase your self-esteem and therefore it will increase your leadership. And with leadership, you're going to be able to attract better quality employees. You're going to be able to attract better deal flow. You're going to be able to attract the things necessary to build the kind of company you guys say you want to build and the kind of deals that you want to see going forward. <clears throat> Sam Walt, outstanding leaders go out of their way to boost self-esteem of their personnel. If people believe in themselves, it's amazing what they can accomplish. High expectations are the key. High expectations, not low, not average, not mediocre, high, which means by definition everybody we hire is not going to make it. Does everybody understand that? Sage advice I give to all mentees, protégés, and students. I can't help you out of the hole if I climb in it with you. I can't help you out of the hole if I climb in it with you. People will never see past your shortcomings till you do. You've got to see past your shortcomings to do the stuff that we've covered in the first three days. Just like Jim Rohn said yesterday or the day before, you've got to admit that you're in trouble and admit to yourself that you're the cause and admit and decide you want to do something about it. Ricardo's made a life-changing decision. He's already a successful guy and he wants to do something else. That takes balls. Because the new thing he's going to start, he's not going to have the reputation that he's got now in the current industry that he's already part of. He's going to stay in the industry, but he's going off to some godforsaken place where they don't give a shit about Chelsea. Maybe the Chinese do. Maybe that's wrong. I don't know. I don't think they give a shit about Chelsea. Know where it is. Okay. We've already talked about the, the different management styles. Now, we're going to end here, but these are the different type of management styles, the senior leadership styles. Arch type, command type, commander, visionary, strategist, executor. Jack Welch was a commander, Richard Branson's a visionary. You and Richard Branson standing together, that's a nice picture. 
strategist Michael Eisner, formerly of these, uh, uh, Disney. Sam Walton is an uh, um, executor. Okay, the Jack Welch, energetic, decisive, motivating, bad side, domineering, intimidating, uncontrollable. That sounds like somebody I know. Okay. Richard Branson, which I know you like to think maybe you're at that end of the continuum. Ambitious, creative, inspirational, overconfident, no fuck, absolutely. Okay, unrealistic, absolutely. Defensive, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Eisner, intelligent, objective, analytical, smug, pretentious, un, un, unemotional. Walton, tireless, disciplined, demanding, impatient, unreasonable, and unappreciative. Okay, we've covered a lot of material. Um, we're going to go over the homework that I gave you on Monday night, the rest of it tomorrow. For those of you that um, the list we didn't go over, we're also going to have some more role playing and we're going to uh, enlist the assistance of the people we haven't used heretofore. Um, give some thought because we're going to get tougher, although Sip and Patrick and you, who else is with you? Oh, and you did a good job. We're, as it goes on, we're going to get harder. Pretty soon you're just going to be in selling nothing. You got nothing but a piece of paper. No half-sold condos in Chicago like we did today, which... Marcus is correct. It'd be a lay down, be no problem. That'd get that'd get financed overnight or in a day. Okay. So tomorrow and, and, and by the time we get to Saturday, it's going to be tougher. Where you know I don't expect fist fights over it, but it's going to be harder because we want to progressively get tougher. So you see, see how it goes. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay. Dinner's at eight thirty. Correct. Yes.